بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله واتوب اليك we ask allah the almighty to bless us on this holy month of Ramadan to grant us forgiveness for the many sins that we commit and protect us from our evil deeds in alhamdulillah nahmaduhu ta'ala wa nasta'inu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billah min shururi anfusina وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو محتد ومن يدلل فلا هادي له. Verily all praises belongs to Allah subhanahu wa taala. We praise Him. We rely upon Him. We seek His forgiveness, and we seek refuge in Allah. From our evil selves and from our wicked deeds, and whomsoever Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala guides, no one can misguide. Wallahi alhamd. And whosoever Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala leaves to be astray, no one can guide them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated this holy month for us to fast. And some of the wisdom behind fasting, or the most important thing for us, as it comes very, very unambiguously in the ayat, very straightforward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu Kutiba alaykum siyam Kama kutiba al ladheena min qablakum La'allakum tattakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe? So Allah addresses the believers. Ya yu aladina, ya amanu. O you who believe, it has been prescribed for you fasting, similar to the way it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you would gain taqwa. So it shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers. He's, give, he's prescribed fasting as He prescribed it like before the, the nations that came before us in order that we would fear Him more. In order that we would put, take, give His commandments precedence over our desires. In order that we would avoid His prohibitions the things he has prohibited for us. And refrain from those things in which he has prohibited us from. That all of that takes precedence over our desires. And that's taqwa. Is placing a barrier between you and the hellfire. As, is, as if it is a shield, shielding you from the hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty says in the Quran, 
ولقد وسينا الذين آمنوا الكتاب من قبلكم وإياكم إن اتقوا الله الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتابه الكريم clarifying for us the importance of taqwa and that he has ordered us with taqwa he has ordered us to to avoid his prohibitions and to do his commands he said and we have ordered you or advised you or advised those who believe in the book وَسَيْنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا آمَنُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Those who came before you وَإِيَّاكُمْ And you إِنْ اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ To fear Allah So Allah has ordered us with taqwa Allah has commanded us all throughout the Qur'an with taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu ladhina amanu wa taqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayu ladhina amanu, O you who believe, it taqu allah, he orders us with taqwa. Fear Allah, it taqu allah, haqqa tuqatihi, tuqatihi. It's rightful taqwa, meaning the full taqwa, Give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his haq by really fearing him, meaning acting upon his commands and staying away from those things he has prohibited. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَمُتُّنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except in a state of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to die as Muslimin and bless us to die as believers in him subhanahu wa ta'ala and bless us with Jannah to those because all of these distractions in this life, they distract us away from Allah and away from the Sabila Mu'mineen and away from the Sarat Mustaqim. All of these things, all of these things in, in, in the dunya, whether it be wealth, whether it be the opposite sex, whether it be uh, other things that are in accordance with our desires, even some people eating habits, some people it's drugs, whatever it is, that all of those things, they detract you and distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His commandments. And they take you away from taqwa Allah azza wa jal. They take you away from remembering Allah, from having dhikr, and from fearing Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So as believers, you're always being shaken and challenged. No one is, is watching you except Allah to see how you will do, to see what you'll do in the night and see what you do in the day and see, are, are you really fasting? Are you sneaking and eating food and involving yourself, smoking a cigarette here and there, smoking some weed here and there, doing this, have a girlfriend, commit zina, whatever it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees all of this. He sees if you really have taqwa, if you really fear Him. And we seek refuge in Allah from our evil selves. And that's beautiful in the khutbah al hajjah That right there is so powerful when we reflect on that. Inna alhamdulillah. Inna alhamdulillah. Inna alhamdulillah. Verily, all praises belongs to Allah. Inna alhamdulillah. نَحْمَدُوهُ وَنَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ We praise Him. We seek refuge in Him. Or we seek His support. نَحْمَدُوهُ وَنَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ And we seek forgiveness from Him. وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ يَنْفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيَّاتِ عَمَالِنَا And we seek refuge in Allah from our evil selves. وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ يَنْفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيَّاتِ عَمَالِنَا And from our evil deeds. Right there, if we were to actualize those statements, that supplication to Allah, 
that seeking refuge with Allah from our evil selves. If we were to actualize that and practice it in our daily lives, we would be away from so much evil. Even if we were to keep that on our tongue, that supplication, that dhikr, that, re that remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would be in a higher state of iman. And perhaps in a state of ihsan, of righteousness and piety and, and really, and having taqwa. And the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, when asked about ihsan, قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَن تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تُكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ It is to worship Allah as if you see Him. And since you don't see Him, know that He sees you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we act as if Allah doesn't see us. And we commit these sins during the day and the night. And we show, we exhibit very little taqwa. Most of us. I'm not saying all of us, because there are. Inna akhshal ibadi al ulama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the most God fearing of his slaves is the ulama, is the scholars. Letting us know that there are those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And give him haqqa tuqatihi. And give him the true taqwa. And that's the ulama. They fear Allah. That's why Allah raised them. He raises those who he gives ilm darajat. And may Allah bless us to be of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and forgive us. And help us to really practice his deen because it's so easy. What I'm doing right now is easy on my tongue. It's so easy for me to say this. And I can prepare a daras, I can prepare, prepare a lecture, can prepare a khutbah. We can prepare many speeches, we can do this, we can look in the books. But when it comes to practicing, we're so weak. And we're so in need of Allah. We're so in need of the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah. The salaf of salih. Ridwan Allah Because they exhibited taqwa. They feared Allah. And that's why Allah made them, why we remember them 1400 years later. We read books and we study books from the ulama that are a thousand years old. In my backpack here right now, I have a book with me that's at least seven, eight hundred years old. Or about six hundred years old. We read it, we read those ahadith, we read the explanations. But how does, it, how does it penetrate the heart? Does it penetrate the heart? And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those whose hearts are penetrated with taqwa, who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who benefit from this holy month of Ramadan. May Allah bless us with ikhlas, with thabat al-sunnah. And before I go, I want to read one athar of what taqwa means from the salaf of this ummah. This is a statement of Ibn Abbas <coughs> radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. He said, Al-Muttaqoon Al-Ladheena yahdhuruna min Allahi aqubatihi He said that the pious ones, Al-Muttaqoon, that they are those who beware the punishment of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's aqubah. So they're mindful. They're mindful of those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and they avoid those things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.